So apparently, uh, uh, courses, uh, advanced courses can have uh, a class or something during the uh, uh, this uh, uh, special period at the end. Arthur just told me, and. Uh, during the reading period, unless, uh, yes. So Arthur, what was exactly the thing about the, uh, having a class after uh, you told me, which what you told me five minutes ago? No, with Arthur behind you. Uh, so, uh, so there was supposed to be, uh, so it's possible in principle to have a, uh, one more class or what uh, uh, for an advanced course unless somebody opposes it. Okay. Um, you have to find out who's registered in the course. Yes. And if they agree, then you could, in principle, have three more lectures. Three more lectures, yes, yes, okay. <laughs> wow. You have to consult everybody who's. Yes, yes. Well, Tsangwei will be uh, will be a bit uh, busy, but still, will it be all right with you? Yes, yes. Then we can do a lot more crystallography. But, but you must, uh, you should make an outline. Yeah, yeah. Each class, so that we know what and if you know who's registered, they have to Yeah. Let's see who's registered. Are you registered? Okay. So Arthur says that uh, if you agree, we can uh, we can have three more lectures uh, uh, the week of December four. Uh huh. No, no, next next time is fine. Yes, 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 just look. So, by the way, uh, a good book for uh, uh, things up to the diagrams, and so is this book on uh, conformal field theory by Philippe Di Francesco, Mathieu, and Seneschal. Uh, as you can see, they have on the cover D, uh, a higher D graph. And they have exactly uh, the way the, the, the modular matrices, which are interesting for us now. In particular, this matrix S uh, corresponds to a rotation on the torus by 90 degrees. Yes, it's the SL2Z. Uh, and what this does is the characters of the AN labels. And uh, uh, these are the things that we uh, shall use. So the idea here is that we use the, uh, um, the everything about the quantum groups. What's known about the quantum groups, that was done since the 1990s, in the decade after that, by and large. Uh, so these are the transformations T and uh, S. And they give characters. This is the entry of S. Now, uh, 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 I shall uh, mention just very briefly, you can take a picture if you want. Uh, uh, what you see here is, uh, uh, look, uh, let's look first at the, uh, uh, at the equation here. Do you see it's a nonlinear uh, equation? And uh, let me see where it is. Ah, there. Uh, you remember it, G1 is U1 plus 1 over U2 plus U2 over U1, yes? 
This is uh, these are the this is a 3D representation of SL3. Yes. So these are the three vectors. One is the highest weight U1, and the others. So uh, the others. This is. Let's see here. So this is U1, this is U2, these are the uh, U1, U2 correspond to the uh, highest, uh, to the uh, uh, highest weights. of the fundamental irreducible representations. The graph here is A2, which is uh, SL3, and U1 corresponds to this, U2 corresponds to this. They're the duals of the uh, simple roots. And uh, the representation for U1 has these three points, this is exactly, uh, so it's U1, here it's negative U2, and here, as you can see, and here this is U, uh, U, it would be additively U2 minus U1, so this is U2 over U1, yes? And we write correspondingly the generator 1 as being U1 plus and this is not negative U2, but it's U2 inverse. U1 plus U2 inverse plus U2 uh, U1 inverse. And similarly for G2, which is U2 plus U1 inverse plus U1 U2 inverse. And uh, we make these to be eigenvalues now. So these were abstract matrices, but now we'll take this equation for eigenvalues. And we find, find U1, U2. Yes, and uh, U1, U2 will be some roots of unity. Uh, you see here the equation. Uh, and uh, uh, these are the solutions. So uh, as you can see here, uh, this is exactly the graph AN, the graph AN over SU2. Yes, it's a cutoff of, uh, it's just like a line AN for over SU2. This is AN over SU3, sorry, yes. So it's a cutoff of the representations. You can see that there's nothing on the mirrors. And uh, these are roots of unity. So what I did graphically was just stretch the thing with these factors. You see some root three plus one. Uh, stretch it, and then all of a sudden, what you see is exactly the, uh, uh, the weight space of uh, SL3. Yes? So if you put these in a, in a square, you, you get which roots of unity appear. Yes, so this way you can see the action of the vial group at every vertex, yes, and the translations. And, uh, and here are other graphs. Let me show you one, uh, you see, and various. Uh, so this is a D graph, the one on the cover of the book, which uh, has here a triple a triple root in the middle. Yes, so uh, so these are just the, uh, and this is a, a, a small one. Uh, this is a series, the AN, which has only, it, it's a series like the, like the D, in a way, uh, an orbifold series, but, and uh, look, it has only things on the diagonal of the A, and this is the first exceptional, it's something that uh, Tseng Wei also, that is part of two series that uh, Tseng Wei later uh, found, and uh, which are series across all the routes. As you can see, these are the, uh, so once again, these are the solutions of this equation. 
So G1 and G2, these are eigenvalues of the graph G. And these are the unitaries. And what we do with these is the following. We take uh, an eigenvector uh, V, which goes from uh, uh, the vertices of G into C. So the vertices of G could be the star, for instance, In the middle, you have an octahedron. So it's an octahedron with wings. Remember, the wing is uh, just like the line for the graph A. Yes? And the octahedron, uh, I know exactly why it appears. This would be likely in the book it appears because of some cells which I have introduced. Uh, so the, we take an eigenvector. These are some numbers at every vertex. And uh, this has eigenvalues, eigenvalues now. Uh, let's call them G1 and G2 for the uh, fundamentals, E reps, uh, alpha 1 and alpha 2. And you write the equations there. So you write G1 is equal to U1 plus and so on, G2 is equal to U2 plus, and so on. And you solve, and you find unitaries. Now, how do you know that you'll find these unitaries? Again, by the theory, which uses some modular matrices, and uh, I brought here some tools. We won't use them here, but you see... Uh, some uh, very intricate mathematical designs. What this is, is a cone over the torus. Yes, so this has a singularity here. You understand from every point of the torus, you, you draw a line, right? So it's a filling of the torus, which is invariant to the modular group. The modular group is the automorphism of the torus, topological automorphism, yes? So obviously, whatever you do to the torus, goes on to this filling, yes? A filling, if you remember from the first lessons of this course, gives you a vector on the boundary. Yes, the boundary is a surface torus. And this vector will be modular invariant. So that way you, you get modular invariants. And uh, after that, you take the torus uh, field, exactly the torus with this filling, which looks like, uh, which looks something like uh, Yo-yo now, look, it, it has a feeling inside like this. So it's a yo-yo in which you, you glue the top part and the bottom part, these two parts, yes? You see, uh, first topologically, you have a pyramid, an Egyptian square pyramid, and you glue the opposite triangular faces. Yes, this is clearly the cone over the, to over the torus, right? Then when you glue two of them, you get a yo-yo, you see, like this. Then the cylinder contracts, so this is, I'm going now very fast, and when it contracts, it gives you a pillow with a, uh, with a center contracted, exactly this. So I had to raid the Walmart uh, kids uh, uh, section. Yes, you see, it's exactly this. This is a projection, an orthogonal projection. It projects onto a disc with a puncture. You see, the puncture is where my finger is. You can see that it's a projection if you put two of them together. So that's exactly our, our torus with a filling. Yes, it became this projection. So this projection gives you a, uh, the Hilbert space of... Uh, of uh, a disk with a puncture marked E, where E is this exceptional. And then you take another one where you have the graph A. And now if you have a wire of type EA, do you remember that uh, 
that our uh, that everything we work with for representation theory were maps of A, of the graph An, into something like E, yes? So if you have an object of type AE, then uh, you can surround it by some wires like this. In the An, the matrix, the modular matrix of An is the identity. So what you'll get here is I and I, so you get some diagonals of a modular matrix, and these, these will be the characters of your group. Do you see you have here a wire? And it's surrounded by something, yes? So it goes from an irreducible to an irreducible, to the same irreducible, yes? Or if you surround the wire in, in quantum topological quantum field theory by, by anything, since you can have a map only from an irreducible to the same irreducible, yes, not to other irreducibles, it must be a scalar, yes? And this scalar is a character. So that's how you get characters. Uh, that was just a, a tiny sketch. This would be in the, in the book, but not, uh, not ne necessarily in the course. So the formula now is the following, that the... Uh, the, the eigenvalues, so let me write it here, let me lift this uh, a bit, and uh, let me lift the blackboard. So uh, what you will find is exactly uh, that uh, the eigen, eigenvalues uh, U I uh, is is equal uh, U uh, U X U I. Let's say yes is equal to the inner product of the uh, to X of two pi I over n. This is our Coxeter number times the inner product of the weight I with some uh, eigenvalue j, j corresponding to j, which is a uh, weight, weights, uh, okay, j is a weight of, uh, of the graph, uh, a weight of our underlying g. So this is Exactly this. So the eigenvalue for this G is this. So this is the inner product between weights. Of G. And uh, is in general not an integer. Remember that the weight times a root in a product with a root is an integer, the product of two weights is not an integer. In general, that's why you have here all kinds of little dots, do you see? So the thing is subdivided into, further into three here. And uh, you get, uh, so uh, this is the eigenvalue, let's call them uh, lambda j. So, this lambda j is a weight, and what the weights, the weights which appear are precisely the diagonal, are the eigenvalues, are corresponding to the eigenvalues of uh, the graph G with multiplicity, and uh, they are uh, they are labeled by the graph An, as you can see here. This is a graph An, and you find it with a periodicity. Of 
of uh, the affine wire group. You can see here the mirrors in gray. So this ornamentation, uh, I introduced it to emphasize the structure. So you can see here all the eigenvalues. And the eigenvalues, uh, these are guaranteed to appear. And uh, uh, it's now conjecture, but I think I'm very close to uh, showing it that these are the only, uh, these are the only possible eigenvalues. So we will use something that we'll do today. So as you can see here, uh, the number of points, do you see how many are there in the red thing? Do you see it's four, it's uh, three, time, three times four, yes, 12. So there are exactly as many eigenvalues as vertices of the graph, or for obvious reasons, linear algebra, yes. So uh, the number of uh, such uh, eigenvalues is exactly the... Uh, uh, number of points in the group times a vial group. You can see here the underlying vial group which repeats them. Yes? So in this case, it's, uh, it's times six. And uh, the last word, the effect of this is the following. You take an eigenvector, as I said, V, with G1 and G2, and then you take uh, on the ribbon, remember that the ribbon is period of uh, the weight of G, Cartesian product with the, uh, with the vertices of the graph G here. And you take, uh, on, the, on this, you take the V, and on the weights of G, you take, uh, let's call it u to the power, um, u to the power x. So x in the weights of g goes into, is mapped into u to the power x, which means u1 uh, to the power uh, x, uh, x in a product with 1 uh, and so on with the uh, with uh, i1 and and so on so this is uh, so what you do is you put here 1 u1 u2 u1 u2 u1 square yes and here u1 inverse everything and on the other side you put the eigenvector v now, what you have this way is that, uh, look what happens. If you translate, so you have the translations, the affine translations in the vial group. Yes, as the affine vial group, it, it moves. So the affine translations have uh, eigenvalue ui u1 and u2, yes? You can see that if you move, you multiply by u1 and u2, yes? And on the other hand, if you take the sum of neighbors here, let me lift it a little bit. If you take the sum of neighbors, neighbors, on G of this, you get exactly the eigenvalue, eigenvalue uh, G, I. Yes? And if you take the sum of neighbors on the weights, Then exactly as you can see here, in every direction you get ux, yes? So you get the sum over x in the weights of sigma i, of the representation i, of uh, u uh, to the 
uh, of ui to the x, which is exactly uh, is uh, of ux, excuse me, and this is exactly uh, the gi. Those are our equations. The gi is exactly the sum over all vectors in the representation of uh, this. So the conclusion is that uh, the conclusion is uh, theorem. The eigenvalue, the, uh, the product, the vectors constructed Uh, here, before, above, are one biharmonic the sum on the graph gives you the eigenvalue gi on g, the sum on the ribbon on the weights gives you the same. And two, they are unitary, the uh, eigen eigenvectors for the translation group in the affine vial group. Yes? So this group is unitary and abelian. So the group of translations obviously preserves the, the inner product because it's defined pointwise. And it's abelian. It, it's just, just translations, yes? So the eigenvectors are precisely constructed with this. So you can see there that you have, uh, in this case, 12 times uh, uh, 6. 12 times uh, 6, uh, uh, so 72 eigenvectors for, uh, on the ribbon. So these are then the, uh, uh, these are then the higher, so we have constructed this way, uh, the uh, the translation is a higher coxeter are uh, the higher coxeter elements and the eigenvalues of the UIs are uh, uh, the as embedded into the, uh, as coming from uh, uh, the, uh, the coming from the graph AN, vertices of the graph AN. These eigenvalues are the higher exponents. So these are the exponents of the higher Lie group. We have constructed those, which are a fundamental thing. So again, the usual exponents appear by translation with a coxet element, and these are the higher, these are the higher ones. So the translations here are in every direction of the ribbon. So we'll stop here with this part and go now to uh, to the next, uh, are there any questions or comments about this part? Uh, the part, again, that remains to be uh, shown, but uh, I'll, uh, I'll speak about it at some other time, is that uh, the fusion generates all the biharmonic functions and that the biharmonic functions have dimension on the full ribbon have dimension exactly the number of vertices of the graph G, the exceptional graph, uh, times the uh, order of the subjacent vial group. 
So that's a linear dimension of the space of uh, biharmonic functions. So right now we know this for, for the pardon spanned. Okay, so then we'll, uh, we'll stop this and uh, uh, for the moment lift it and then continue. So, uh, let me remind you here uh, one, uh, one uh, picture that we had before. Remember first that we had a, a matrix, uh, a usual matrix, so this was uh, in math over SL2. Yes, the usual math. You have, uh, you repeat a matrix, so this is uh, your nostalgia time for uh, high school linear algebra. You repeat the matrix uh, periodically, however, which you didn't do there, and you find here the ribbon. And then you take a point on the ribbon and uh, so you take a point on the ribbon, and uh, let me use a neutral, a neutral color magenta here, and you go with red this way, and with blue, so this element is Eij, and then you put here with blue a negative one, Remember, this is a physics building, so if you don't want to get electrocuted, you should uh, remember that plus is red and negative, minus is blue when you deal with electricity. So I try to keep to this convention. So the rest are zeros here, as you can see. And this here is the element Hij, yes? So it's on the diagonal. The ribbon is here. And uh, so in the case AN, in the case AN, when the graph G is AN, the, uh, the roots, the roots are not just abstract points on the ribbon with given inner products, that's how we define the roots, yes, in general, but They are concrete vectors Hij, which realize those inner products. Yes? So that's why you get the inner, the, the inner product of a root with itself too, because there's a plus one and a negative one, you see? And now, if you look very carefully at what exactly did you do here, notice the following. There is a vile mirror here, so this is a vile mirror. Let me make an arrow, vile mirror on a weight of SL2, of the subjacent, the underlying SL2. The vile mirror, and they are not, it's not just one, but if you repeat it periodically, 
which is here, let's say you have here a negative one, there's another one. So they are not a vile mirror, but vile mirrors. Yes, parallel mirrors. Do you see? And, and uh, they repeat the pattern. So the period, uh, so it's exactly like in the old trains, which don't exist in America anymore, more or less, where you had uh, always two parallel mirrors. You could see an infinite number of reflections, yes? This is how the HIJ look like. And what you can see here also is uh, uh, maybe I have a more interesting uh, color. I seem to have taken a lot of colors which are all the same. So uh, let me, however, use this orange also. So what you can see here, look, this part between mirrors, this is the graph, graph AN, between mirrors. Yes? The mirrors are the cutoff, remember, yes? And one more piece. So on this graph, you put the red pebble. Yes, so this is the graph AN. These are the mirrors. Graph AN again. And here you choose your pebble which is a vertex of the graph AN. So this is where you put uh, the red pebble and it's reflected in the blue pebble here. So this is a plus one and this is a negative one. Yes? So that's a mechanism. This part clear? Uh, moreover, one more thing here. Look, another, can you see another place where you can put the ribbon here? The, excuse me, the, the graph AN. Yes, yes, perpendicular. Can you see where it's orthogonal on the AN that we have? Well, somebody must see it here. So one position of the AN is here. Yes, and then another position is, look, it's here. So this is also the graph AN, perpendicular to it. So this is another graph AN. These are all the graphs A, A, A. And uh, now you see the, the, uh, and remember that this direction here, this direction is, are the weights of uh, the graph G. Yes? And on the graph AN, you have now the pebble again. So this coordinate, which is for EIJ, it's I plus J, is I, uh, it's J minus I, the vertical coordinate is J minus I over two. This is the J minus I over two. That's the distance here on this graph AN. And the position here is I plus, I plus J over two. Yes, and these are exactly the two coordinates of the ribbon. So, uh, the ribbon, remember that the ribbon is a product weights of G, at least a full ribbon, but we all need the weights of G times the uh, uh, AN graph, 
which a n is also in the weights of G, between uh, and is between mirrors and can you see what the two coordinates, we have two coordinates on the ribbon, yes? One coordinate here tells you the weights of G, yes? This is a direction weights of G, do you see? That tells you where to put what? One guy's a little bit more alive. Yeah. Where to put the mirror, yes? So the first one tells you where to place the mirror, yes? And the second one, the second coordinate is this one. So it tells you where to put the, whatever you want to call it is good. Right. Yes, yes, remember from your childhood? Yes, yes, it's there. Right. Yeah. Oh, you didn't think like that when you were five. Uh, the colored pebble, yes? Do you remember a, a kaleidoscope? Yes, you have some mirrors and you have the pebble, right? A glass pebble. So this is where to, where to place the pebble. And the pebble is a number plus one. Yes, plus one of H, I, J. So this is the I, plus one at I of H, I, J, yes? Is this part clear? Look at it here. You place a pebble here. Do you see, you get the plus one exactly at that distance, yes? and uh, you get the minus one here, right? So, once you notice this, and this is uh, uh, something for our uh, uh, students, graduate or not, you see what you have to do is to solve an ordinary case, which is here the uh, HIJ, but you should try to understand it with methods which work in general, yes? So that's, that's the way mathematics works in these kind of uh, problems. I mean, there are other problems, other kinds of problems, but when we want to extend the mathematics, so you, you try to understand the HIJ this way. Once you see that, uh, the, the uh, thing is clear, we'll have the proof next time, but uh, what should we do in the case of, uh, of uh, let's say, SL2 and more general? What we we'll have is the affine mirrors This length is n here, yes. These are, these are the affine So these are the, uh, these are the vial mirrors. Remember that the vial group is made of reflections in these mirrors. These mirrors are perpendicular to, uh, simp to roots. Yes. And uh, uh, you complete them with the affine, affine, affine mirrors, which are perpendicular for the main chamber to the affine root. Remember the affine root had those integer uh, coefficients, yes? One, two, three, four, five, six, four, E8 or so. So these are perpendicular to the affine root. Yes, and moreover, then you scale 
scale by our, what we call the Coxeter number n. Okay, so this is scaled. And now you will have here, you will have the graph uh, an, we should use exactly the same colors as there. So this would be the graph an, this is nothing here, this is one dot and a double dot and so on. So this is a graph an In this case, it's a uh, n minus three. Uh, why do you have n minus three fast? Where's the three coming from? What three things do you see for it? The mirrors, it's a distance to the mirrors, one, one, one on every side, yes? N is the, uh, n is, uh, the scale of the mirrors, yes? And now, uh, what you're going to have is uh, you're going to place here some pebble which will be a plus one. And uh, then you reflect it here to be uh, to a minus to a negative one. And then you reflect it further. This is not a regular uh, polygon, but uh, it's a, uh, you see this is bigger here, so this should be a little bit bigger. It is exactly what you remember as the, so this is the highest weight of a representation here. So this is exactly the shape that is in uh, the books of representation theory. So you have here a negative one, a plus one, a negative one, a plus one, and a negative one. And all the rest are zeros. So all the rest are zeros. And you reflect it also uh, finely. Yes, all the rest are zeros, and a period, so here a period of uh, a period of roots, that's important, of G will be the diagonal, the diagonal of the higher matrix, higher matrix. So what you see here is a diagonal exactly like this. Here is the usual diagonal. The usual diagonal is one dimensional, this diagonal is two dimensional. So this is, this is a higher HIJ. And using the uh, using formulae of uh, uh, Katz-Walton and the formula of Weil for the denominator, we'll show that the inner product of two such, uh, uh, such uh, things, which we'll call hexes, The name in the literature is uh, weight 
weight permutohedron. So it's not the most general. It's not the most general form of permutohedron which would have would have arbitrary edges. Here, as you can see, in the case of SU2, you have three basically three lengths, which are the three distances to the mirrors. Yes, doubled. So this has A B A B A B. Yes, and this is a C, and A plus B plus C is constant. Yes. Moreover, you can see here that the vial vector rho, which is this one, plus the highest weight, plus the, uh, excuse me, the position in the graph AN, plus the position of the mirrors, that should, be, uh, should have parity zero. So it should be a root, not a weight. Yes, on one sheet. So the graph AN is... Uh, Partite has the same, uh, you know, for SL2 is tripartite. So this uh, full ribbon separates into three. So this would be our higher diagonal. Next time, we'll uh, have a proof which is very similar to the proof that we did for the inner product between roots. Uh, in the same spirit, but it, it does use some one more ingredient. The, and... Uh, that one will show that the uh, inner product between two such hexes is exactly the, uh, the uh, inner product that we defined on the root. So here, let me show you some things. Since we have uh, five minutes, it's not a good uh, moment to start a new theory in the last five minutes, but this, one's, uh, this one shows it uh, uh, to you here. Uh, these are the weights of uh, SL4 here. So if you want to take a picture, so for reference, so this is a, this is a graph AN for SL4. Can you see these are the mirrors? The mirrors would be a distance one from this, yes? And if you don't have this graph, then the way to get the, the weights of SL4 is the following, cup uh, hand at 90 degrees, okay? Perfect 90 degrees. Cap the, cap the other hand at 90 degrees. And now put them orthogonal on each other. Yes? That's what you got is exactly this. Do you see? One, one hand and the other hand. Yes? Here you can see 90 degrees. Yes? Uh, why is a 90 degree fast here? By large? Between mirrors because the Dinkin diagram for this is A3, right? Then there's a 90 degree between the two outer points. There's no line there, yes? And what you can see here, by the way, on the edges, you can see the group Z mod 4. Do you see? 0, 1, 2, 3. Yes, so the group Z mod 4 acts on this. Yes, it's a symmetry of this. Uh, and uh, I have marked on this a parity. So you can come take pictures or... Uh, uh, okay, so this is a weight. These are the uh, roots of SL4. Yes, so the matrix, a higher matrix, would, uh, would be made of roots. Here is a pocket model. You see, if you caught somewhere in, uh, uh, you know, on the bus or something, and you need to make some computations. What you see here is a ribbon in yellow, the ribbon for the graph uh, for, for, uh, for SL4. Can you see? And this is magnified, the ribbon. Do you see the ribbon is this hat? Yes, so this is exactly the magnification of this. As you can see, what's uh, underlined in red here Yes, can you see what uh, something is underlined? One out of six. This is the... Uh, what's underlined is a vial, the fund, a fundamental vial chamber, yes? And actually, there is one more layer to this. This is used for something which we'll, we'll go to a bit later. If you... Uh, no, this is, this is fine. So now... 
This is a matrix unit. This is a permitohedron for SO4. And you can see here in yellow the affine uh, vial group. Can you see here mirrors? Yes? One mirror here, another mirror here. Yes? And you can see here red pebbles. So these are the mirrors at 90 degrees that I was telling you. What happens if you reflect a point in a, a mirror at 90 degrees? You get a square, right? And the other one, which you can see here, is at 30 degrees, yes? Uh, 60 degrees, excuse me, between this and this, yes? So this gives you the hexagons, right? So what you can see here as an affine network of permitohedra uh, is exactly that, yes? In the smallest case where, when you can have it. And here is a full period, so you can see a period is in black here, a period of the roots. Can you see a period of the roots in black? It's exactly this period, which is here in green. Can you see it's made of a tetrahedron, of a regular tetrahedron, then an octahedron, and then the reverse tetrahedron, yes? So, in, and in this, you have exactly all the reflections of a pebble. Yes, how many reflections would you have in a period? There you have six. Here you have 24, right? So they're repeated for clarity. And uh, this one was used uh, by me to find the characterization of these points as permutations. So, for instance, the number of ascents in the permutation tells you uh, in which of the three uh, pieces you are. Yes, and the number of fixed points, a permutation may have fixed points, uh, tells you uh, uh, how singular you are. So if you're in the middle, you should have no fixed points. And that's exactly the Coxet uh, transformation. One, two, three, four goes into two, three, four, one. So I'll stop, uh, I'll stop here. So this is the, the, that's uh, how we'll continue. We'll continue with the higher matrices. We'll, we have the diagonal of the higher matrices, then we'll build the, uh, the uh, uh, off-diagonal elements. Yes, and after that, we'll start crystallography. That's a plan. Uh, we, we'll start crystallography and build something in this pyramid, build some vegetables which are growing, and uh, they grow into things like the uh, Krebs-Gordon coefficients that... Uh, Physics students wear on their T-shirts sometimes. Yes, so this, this is uh, exactly that pyramid, as you can see. And with the crystallography, then we'll, uh, we'll end the course with these representations. By the way, is there anyone, uh, if, uh, if we are to have uh, one more week, which would allow us to do uh, amazing, uh, amazing new things, about, more things about this crystallography, um, uh, it is possible for this course, if, uh, if people who are registered agree, who's registered in the course? Okay, so if there is uh, no objection, we can uh, continue, uh, and the course will be anyway, if you're registered, you can access it uh, on, the, uh, on, can I mean on Canvas, yes? So to continue one more week uh, during the, uh, this, uh, the week after, the, I mean the week of December, starting December 4th, right?